Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Since we all have microplastics in our bodies, I was thinking today about how like a million years from now, future humans will have like fucking plastic skin. It'll be like armor. It'll protect them from predators because you know there'll be all kinds of wild shit in fucking in that time. There will indeed be wild shit in that time. There will Hello. indeed be wild <laughs> shit in the future. Yes, it's been a while. We haven't done one of these in, in a little while. A lot of stuff is going on for Condor and Crow uh, during the holiday season. Um, we had intended on doing some other shows, but just a lot of chaos, you know, scheduling conflicts and things. Um, but now we're back in the groove of it, sort of. Or Well, hopefully this will put us in the groove of it. We're a little rusty. As you can see, I don't even have my beak on. Ugh, that's just a whole thing. But uh, I love your mask, though. It is good, but uh, I'm going to... Oh, can't breathe. Your hair's looking long. I like it. Looking <laughs> wild. All right. Yeah, I'm back. In case you didn't know, I'm Crow. <laughs> and I'm Condor. And uh, this is our show. petrifying picture show. Um, yeah. I'm really excited about <clears throat> finally showing a luchador movie because we've talked about doing that for a while. Oh, I and, love the genre. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, um, and you know, even people who only might know about luchadors from like either wrestling like you know on tv or yeah. even nacho libre or even uh what was that cartoon that was uh lucha mucha i think was like a cartoon with like wrestlers oh yeah yeah there was one like mexican wrestlers it was yeah. really cool um oh and actually and, uh, i just watched uh was it uh machete kills yesterday so uh yes, Mel gibson's character is briefly wearing a luchador mask yeah, it's not really like, addressed at all in the movie, but briefly he's wearing one. I'm assuming just because it's, you know, the Mexican content. But you know, yeah, still, yeah, sure. technically he's going up against an evil wrestler. Yeah, for reasons. Yeah, yeah. This one, this is a, uh, this was like this movie that we're going to show is not alone in being about a wrestler who fights monsters right like aren't there well, that's there, kind there of the a same. long standing history of uh, this particular character santo uh, yeah. and wrestlers in general uh, a lot of uh Mexican wrestlers went directly from the i guess the small st stage i guess it's still a stage to yeah. the big screen yeah um, quite a few actually like kind of think the sort of universal monsters crossovers but with a wrestler beating them up, kind of. That's kind of the yeah. that sort of genre, subgenre of wrestling movie slash horror. Yeah, he actually has the uh, trilogy. It's a uh, the first one he's fighting a mummy. The second one he's fighting, I think it's robots, and the third one, I think it's wrestling women for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are they from? Are they like from Mars or Venus or something? And I don't. I've never been able to find a good copy of it to actually watch it, but uh, I I just know it exists out there somewhere. Uh, I I think there's also, I know like at least it was alluded to in, um, the Strain. Did you ever watch that show, The Strain on FX? It was about vampires. Oh, the, uh, the vampires, yeah. And it was a, it was based on like a Guillermo del Toro novel, um, right. but there's a character in it who is like a retired, kind of a Santo type character. He was a wrestler in like the '60s or '70s or something like that, and he, um, like had a show where he like beat up Dracula and and stuff like that. You know, yeah, it's one of those. Probably parts. directly inspired by this. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds exactly. So yeah, uh, in case you did not know, the movie we're showing tonight is Santo and Blue Demon against the monsters. And what kind of monsters are they exactly? You'll have to find out. All of them. All, all except, of them. Okay, all of them, except the creature from the Black Lagoon, which makes no sense. And you're going to see the best one. makes no sense. Literally, the scene that's like, it should be him, and it's not. But 
Ah, like old monsters, but him. yeah, I know. I know personally you're going to be affronted by that, so I just wanted oh to put God. that out there. I love him. He's my favorite. We talked about I know. this before. Yeah, but I'm also, sorry. it makes the least sense. It makes makes the least sense because they're all, they're in Mexico, so they're in the southern part of North America. Correct. And they're closer to the creature oh, from so the Black Lagoon. Yeah, than they would yeah. be any of the others. Correct. <sighs> yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, but this movie doesn't, and it's it's magical and wonderful. Yeah, for I that. mean, I, it's yeah. still going to be it's good. Great. But yeah. if we were ra- if I was rating it though, I would have to take a way point for. It. Lack of, of creature exclusion. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, still, I'm excited to watch. You have a wolfman and a Franken. Okay. It's not Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. Okay. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Uh, huh. Yeah. A vampire, a mummy, and a cyclops. Oh, cool. So they, <laughs> for some reason, instead of putting a fish man, they put in a one eyed man. Correct. Which, I mean, is he a regular sized? Is he the same size as a regular person, or is he big? Well, yeah, they're, they're all like luchador wrestler sized. So. <laughs> okay, well, so, I was gonna say I don't know how. I think if it was a giant cyclops, you know, that would not, be, no. but a regular sized cyclops. So it's a man with one less eye. Okay, correct. Yeah, right. and again, I, I guess they couldn't get the rights to Frankenstein's monster, so it's a. Uh, Frankenstein's monster is is uh is that not in the uh, public domain? Oh, Frank, it definitely is. I was gonna say how then I wonder why they couldn't use it then. I did not find a good reason. Huh? They, they just tried to do. They tried to like make a reference to it, but then kind of just did the same thing just with a different name. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Everything they say that there's no creativity left in the world, but you know, this was this was has no excuse. When did this movie they come out? They made a choice and they stuck to it. Damn it! <laughs> what what year did this come out? Um, yeah. it's pretty old, right? Yeah, it's fifties. Yeah, so yeah. you know, yeah, but at least they put a they they pulled a like a they they. A wild card and put a cyclops in for some reason. Yeah. Does it? Well, I don't want to ask too many questions. No, so you want to. Uh, yeah, you, you want to jump straight into the the amazing plot. Uh, yes, otherwise you might yeah. you might lose something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, without further ado, we're going to start the film. There we go.
buenas noches, señoras y señores. Una vez más estamos presenciando el espectáculo de las multitudes, la lucha libre. Y hoy tenemos la agradable sorpresa de emocionarnos con una contienda de hermosas mujeres. Ya están las contendientes ante el público. La fuerza física como un algo privativo del hombre, esa plasticidad de movimientos y agilidad de pantera en estas bellezas. Vean ustedes, la rudeza y el golpe preciso, la mirada atenta y el cuerpo en tensión. Difícilmente nadie aceptaría enfrentarse a estas peligrosas representantes del sexo débil. Estas luchadoras son realmente muy hábiles, llenas de recursos, profesionales de agilidad y nervios de acero. Observen la violencia con que se atacan, la precisión de sus golpes. Y aquí viene el chicotazo. Es la perfección de las llaves, ahí las tienen. Están contendiendo en busca del triunfo, buscando la ocasión y el momento preciso para hacer daño a su enemiga y buscar la victoria. El público las aplaude. Y la forma ruda. El público está feliz, gozando desde sus lugares, apoyando a sus favoritas. Ha entrado ya el relevo, la belleza entra al terreno del deporte de los músculos, de los golpes y las patadas. Vean la acción sucia, los golpes directos a la cara. Y una llave perfecta. Los tres golpes del referee. La destreza y la belleza en un alarde de emoción y de arrojo. Y está tratando de sacarla, la ha sacado a patadas del ring. Y aquí las triunfadoras. El público está realmente emocionado. Un momento, atención, a dos de tres caídas sin límite de tiempo. En esta esquina, Blue Demon y Juan Garza. En esta otra, el gigante de Ébano y el árabe. Esta es la lucha estrella de relevos. señoras y señores, el árabe ha metido una llave de inmediato a Garza y está Garza por su parte ha metido otra llave y aquí tenemos una de las llaves más fuertes y más difíciles de aplicar pero Ébano viene en defensa de su compañero y le ha dado una patada tremebunda a Garza el público está lleno de emoción se ha dividido. Aquí está pidiendo clemencia el árabe. Pero señoras y señores, esta es una lucha realmente emocionante. Aquí está Ébano que viene realmente enojado y recibe con un golpe directo en la cara a Garza. Y aquí está la quebradora. Ha metido la quebradora Garza Ébano, le da un golpe en la cabeza, un golpe sucio. Lo agarra, como ustedes han visto, de los cabellos. El público se está metiendo con él. Pero aquí está el famoso Blue Demon, que ha entrado a defender a su compañero. Pero se acerca a Ébano, le mete los dedos en los ojos, empiezan a recibir a golpes a Blue Demon. Blue Demon, por su parte, se ha defendido, como ustedes saben que siempre se defiende a cabezazos. Está recibiendo... A los dos contendientes, él solo, pero de repente, Ébano lo ha tomado, pero se ha defendido perfectamente bien. Blue Demon, aquí está un chicotazo para Ébano. Y vean ustedes, la forma tan fácil con que Blue Demon se salva de ese golpe que le quería dar el Ébano. Una lucha realmente como ustedes la querían, señoras y señores. Y aquí está ya Grovi completamente Ébano. Se ha dejado caer completamente 
pero entra el relevo y como caballito lo brinca Budeno y lo recibe con un golpe directo en el pecho ha caído y ahí están los tres golpes el refri ha quedado uno fuera y viene Garza Juan Garza a ayudarle a Blue Demon y aquí está la tapatía le ha puesto la tapatía por otro lado el público también está coreando los golpes que ha dado en, en este lugar preciso el referee y aquí está nada menos que metiéndose el público con los luchadores que han sido tan sucios vean ustedes los golpes que mete Ébano sin conmiseración al adversario y está diciendo que él es el campeón que él es el bueno, hasta con el referee le quiere pegar al referee pero aquí está Budemo que se ha enojado le mete un golpe por atrás lo ha tirado completamente, está Grogui ahí está pidiendo clemencia que no le pegue más lo toma Budemo de la cabeza, le da un golpe seco en la espalda y va Grogui completamente otra vez ahí está Garza dándole un golpe directo a la quijada y parecía ser que le quería dar un chicotazo pero se ha quedado en las cuerdas Garza y ahí está pidiendo clemencia Ébano está diciendo que ya no ahí está pidiendo también el aplauso del público por su parte Garza se ha metido con el árabe y aquí está alegando el referee en el centro en el centro del ring y declaran vencedor como siempre a Blue Demon y a Juan Garza I love it already. Yeah, so I thought there was two things that I should mention from the get-go. So yes, it is subtitled. And two, yeah, it does start with 20 minutes of Lucha Libre wrestling that have nothing to do with further in the plot whatsoever. I love it. Oh, I yeah. absolutely love it. I'm hooked already. Uh, something I think is funny that I noticed was um, that the Cyclops had a mask, like a monster mask. Right, and he looked kind of bestial, but then when they got to the wolf man, it just looked like an old man with fangs. Like, it literally just okay, so like there's a reason for that. So, uh, hang on, the Cyclops was actually left over from a previous movie that uh, the producer did, it was left over from uh, La Nave de los Monstruos, which sounds a lot cooler than the monster ship, huh? The monster ship. So, was he the did he own the ship? Was he like the ship? The monster. Monster on the ship. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, there's also a midget alien with an exposed brain that appears in this movie and that previous one. I'm totally looking forward to that. That's all. Oh fantastic. my god, I'm so. How excited. can anything be that? That's like peak <laughs> trash great. cinema. That's great. This is great. Well, and I love that since this isn't like an early wrestling movie, um, that all of the wrestlers. They're just like regular guys. Like they don't have like they're not ripped. Like you know they're not oh, like yeah, wrestlers yeah. It's today. Like some dude, like you know, he he lives up the block and he occasionally puts on a mask and fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah He's not like massive people. steroid built dude who has no neck. Yeah, yeah. I love. I really love that. That's that's great. I miss that time in wrestling, like watching really old wrestling, um, like tapes and things when I was a kid. Uh, but. I have noticed though that that tradition is alive and well in local wrestling because like we've been to a few um, local wrestling matches and it's all just out of shape guys, just, you know, body slamming each other. And it's, it be, you know. I remember there was like one dude who had like a plank and that was his bit. He was like, just yeah, some yeah. dude and he had a block, he had a stick of wood. Yeah. You know? And he like, might he might hit you with it, or he might just kind of show it to you to you know as an intimidation yeah, no, thing because they don't want to really hurt anybody too bad. But no. then again, there's that like backyard extreme wrestling where people just smash people through coffee tables and shit like that. You know, pretty crazy, wild stuff. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I love this movie so far. I mean, I'm I'm very invested yeah, just in this unrelated like wrestling. The, uh... Reminds me of like the old like kaiju movies, the Japanese kaiju stuff, where like yeah. the like cardboard, like bare minimum budget kind of monsters, you know? Yeah. What was that one? There was one with a. Uh, there was one like kaiju. There actually was like a kaiju wrestling thing in Japan. Oh, uh, big! It's like kaiju big battle, but it's like battle spelled like B A T T E L, and like they dress up like different monsters and stuff, and like the bad guy's named like Doctor Box, and it's like. This guy wears a doctor's costume and he just has like a 
cardboard box for a head. Um, that's fantastic. But, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty good. But that's what it kind of reminds me of, too. Um, also, I think it's interesting that, like, in Mexico, and this is also a, a thing in, in Japan, um, like, wrestlers often fight some sort of even like in just like luchador culture they will fight like someone dressed as like a demon or something like that and like it's sort of like the wrestlers for some reason have the upper hand against like supernatural creatures and that's how it is in japan with like pokemon like the fighting type pokemon are often depicted as like wrestlers and things like that and then dark type pokemon which are like usually like scary monstery things they are weak to the moves of the wrestling pokemon so it's like it's just that's just i guess a multicultural thing where there's just dudes that just you know body slam people and they are somehow very effective against fighting supernatural creatures as well it makes sense to me i like i like it yeah I, it's I, like i fully support this idea that sounds yeah. great <laughs> Just a completely non-magical guy just beating the it's crap so out dude, of the like, You know what we really thing. need? We really need Bob. He can just, he's, he's in his garage drinking, but we really need him here right now <laughs> because we got uh, Dracula he's hanging out. The only thing we can yeah. really take care of is Bob. Just just come on, just bring him over. Just give him six pack, he'll take care of it for us. It'll be great. He just walks up to Dracula, like kicks him in the balls and then like grabs him and like picks him up over Shot his head. Shotguns a beer and then walks <laughs> off into yeah. the sunset back to his yeah. garage. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is just uh, a great genre that I'm really glad we decided to get into tonight. But uh, without further ado, let's get back to it. recién fallecido doctor Hadler, que hiciera misteriosos y audaces experimentos, sorprendió a los científicos al revivir a un muerto al hacer un trasplante de cerebro. Nos preguntamos si su hermano, el profesor Otto Hadler, podría resucitarlo aplicando los experimentos de este. Recuerdo que mi tío habló de un castillo abandonado en el que hacía sus experimentos. ¿A qué castillo se refería? Nunca me lo dijo. Papá, ¿a qué clase de experimento se dedicaba mi tío? ¿Por qué llegó a odiarte? Quizá debiste incinerar su cadáver. La última voluntad de mi hermano fue la de no mutilar su cadáver. ¿Sucede algo? Sí. Lo del profesor Bruno Adler. Ese es un caso cerrado. El profesor está muerto y sepultado. Sí, Demon, pero ese hombre hizo un juramento antes de morir. Tengo el presentimiento de que algo malo puede ocurrirle a Gloria y a su padre. Ustedes los enamorados son iguales. No hagas conjeturas. Tu novia y tu suegro están seguros. 
Desearía tener tu misma confianza. Olvida ese asunto. Ve con Gloria y disfruta con ella de tus vacaciones como yo haré con las mías. Buena suerte.
magnífico discípulo, Waldo. Gracias, maestro. Vean al maestro y recuerden que ustedes fueron criminales a los que él rescató de sus tumbas para resucitarlos. Seguirán obedeciendo sus órdenes ciegamente. Maestro, usted me prometió que me dejaría experimentar con seres vivos. <risa> y cumpliré mi promesa. Jeez, Frankenstein just beat the dog shit out of him. Well, I don't think that was Frankenstein. I think that was just a generic. Maybe it was Frankenstein. Because he looked green. It looked like he was like in his What's human he form. All green, except the makeup doesn't go into their hairline. It just stops. <laughs> yeah. And in between scenes, it looked like some of the paint had just kind of like sweated off. Yeah, because it's very hot. It looks like it's very hot there. Well, it's you know, that uh, oil-based <laughs> grease paint stuff. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was, that was Frank. I, I don't know. I assumed it's, it was just a bunch of zombies. that all just kind of melted off. I don't know. Might just be a goon, you know. I don't yeah. know. Very goonish behavior. But he really, I mean, it looks like he, he wasn't pulling it. I mean, I'm sure he was. He's a tra trained professional, but it looked like he was really wailing on him, you know. Well, he was up against Blue Demon. So, uh, 1952, the famous rental is Santo, uh, beat and unmasked the Black Shadow, which was Blue Demon's mentor. And after Blue Demon's mentor was defeated, uh, Blue Demon just switched sides and became a good guy. Oh, heel he turn. Or, into, or, I mean, uh, face turn. Yeah, they, they switched from good guy to, from bad guy to good guy. Yeah. It lasted until 1953, where Blue Demon and Santo went up against each other, and Santo was defeated, and Santo never forgot. Oh, man, I wouldn't either. Despite the fact that they starred in, like, a bajillion movies thereafter. And actually, Santo actually did 52 films between 1958 and 1982, which is... Oh, my God. That's a lot. Was it just... So was it just the guy, or did they keep the character going after? Oh, him. Uh, I, he apparently... Um, he made movies, and his son made movies, and his grandson made movies, but he was the only Santo. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was like was a legacy character. kind of thing, like a like a um, Sammy Terry type, you know, like, are you familiar with Sammy Terry? I, I know it's an Indiana thing, but I don't know if he was known, like, I know, I know other people do know of him, but he um, was basically a, a movie host, um, much like ourselves, but on TV, um, and he always, like, dressed up like some kind of old wrinkly ghoul, and he always had this, like, signature laugh. Um, but, like, he did it, and then when he was too old to do it, then his son took over for him. So I didn't know if it was like that. That's the thing. You would never know. Uh, apparently, his face was never revealed uh, to the public, like, ever. Oh, okay. So Which is one thing I kind of liked about this. In this movie, he's literally sitting in his, you know, office Read newspaper, you know, in full Santo guys, yeah. you know? Like, somebody's gonna walk in and see you. You know? It, it's like, he, it implies that he's, like, a wrestling detective, and, you know, like... Yeah, that, that, he's like that guy full, full time. Yeah. 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 It's great. Um, I like the idea of, like, a luchador detective. There should be, like, a luchador like, noir movie or or something like that. I think that would be interesting. Watch that. I yeah, for sure. Bad, but I would uh, yeah, I definitely watch the hell out of that. Yeah, this sounds very entertaining. Like we've said before, it doesn't matter if a movie is good; it matters if it's entertaining or not. Right. You know, 
that's all that really matters because as long as you're entertained, won't focus on the horrors of reality. And I, I would also want him to speak English with subtitles that don't actually match what he says. Yes. I love I also request that. Yeah. It's just slightly off. Because, I mean, you can have some, like, pretty consistent, like, cool action sequences where, you know, somebody's goons come to trying to intimidate him or whatever, and he, you know, gets in frequent fights and things. So... Games them for their uh, poor costuming choices. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they keep trying to take his mask off, but he always stops them from doing Could it. possibly defeat me. Look at your grease paint. It doesn't even go up to your hair. Yeah. Come, come back break. when you're ready. Tries to punch him, and it's just their fit. His fist slides off. Slides right off. Um, they, they quickly just. Oh! <laughs> it's very funny to me. But I, I uh, oh, also something I wanted to point out was Waldo the Hunchback because, um, that's such a common trope in horror movies, especially the mad scientist. Yeah. Yeah, like a mad scientist with like a um an Igor type. Uh, you know, sidekick. Um, which I, I mean, obviously, people with spinal deformities are not monsters, but that's yeah. such a common trope, and I we've talked about it a few times, yeah. um, and with different movies we've shown. But I, I feel like it almost is in like in the same sort of realm. Uh, not I don't want to say like they're related, or they're obviously not, but like as the universal monsters or or like just standard no, it, monsters. It is directly tied to it, yeah. It's it's yeah. set up the expectation that anytime you have a mad scientist, they're going to have a henchman and the henchman's gonna have a you know hunch. But I always thought that hunch was supposed to be like further up. Waldo seems to have like a kind of like a weird fin. Yeah, it, yeah, it kind of looks like it gives him some sort like a sort of like he's stooped over and it's like more rounded and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, like in the, the middle, middle of, his back. of his back. So he has like a back and then there's a again it's like a i don't know fin or wings or something like under his suit i don't know i hope that at some point like he i'm sure it's not going to happen but he like has to fight santo and like his shirt gets ripped off and he has like some kind of weird <laughs> appendage or, or something or some extra arms yeah also, or like an extra person attached on his back the other way around yeah yeah then they could like no matter what Standing, they can like punch him or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Or one small guy on his back has a gun. <laughs> just the other, the little guy pulls a gun on him and just shoots him. Yeah. That'd be a good reveal. Um, I don't know. Something else I was going to say about that. Uh, about the little person. Um. Oh, the alien. The alien. Oh, it was the, definitely there. Yeah. It was not as interesting as I was hoping, but it was definitely a exposed brain alien thing yeah it puts me in the mind of like a tiki kind of thing it's almost like a tiki type looking design so somewhat oh and then, yeah yeah exposed brain yeah and like also i love that no one acknowledged it like you, you just, no, just kind of standing, standing there looking around I thought, yeah i was hoping it would move so you know it's not a statue yeah but i love it I, i'm assuming the uh plastic or the foam or whatever this costume is made out of you just couldn't move very far. You just yeah. So the arms are always up, and he's just kind of only yeah. slightly turning from side to side. Yeah, while you're boiling like in the suit because it's a thousand degrees in there. Yeah, I think it would be really funny though if they actually just never like made any reference to him at all, and he was just like a strange creature that was observing everything, like he's not directly in... somewhere in the background. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like not directly involved. He just wants to watch everything go down. You know. Oh, he's uh like Uchi yeah. the Watcher from uh, Marvel Comics. Yeah, yeah, he's there like, to observe. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, don't mind me. You can't see me. Why can you shouldn't be able to see me? I'm here to watch. I think that was the thing on. I'm pretty sure that was a bit that they did on um, Venture Brothers. There was like this big alien that was like very loud. Oh, and that, it would be like ignore was. me. Yeah, ignore <laughs> me. <laughs> he's like hiding behind the book. It's like, it's we, like we really can, small. You're right. You're right there. We can. <laughs> I don't want to get involved. I'm only here to observe. <laughs> All right, brain exposed alien dude. Let's let's see what you can do. 
with that brain. Es este maldito enmascarado. Volvemos a encontrarnos, Demon. El Santo y tú acabaron con mi vida, pero en el momento que moría, juré vengarme de ustedes. Maestro, cumpla su promesa. Déjeme experimentar con Blue Demon antes de matarlo. Llévenlo. Esa Blue Demon, que tu hora ha llegado. No. Espera. Así sería demasiado pronto. Pero, maestro, usted me ofreció... ¡Cállate! Maestro, ¿qué va a hacer? Destruiré al enmascarado de plata. Y nadie mejor para este trabajo... ...que su mejor amigo... ...Blue Demon. Fallará, Sadler. Las fuerzas del bien siempre derrotarán al mal. No oh, esta vez. Tú matarás a Santo. Tú, Demon. Y luego te aniquilaré. <risa> Llévenlo a la cámara duplicadora. <risa> Procede, vuelvo. Acércate, Waldo. Es una reproducción perfecta. Nadie sabrá que no es real. Está hecho. Programado para matar y obedecerme ciegamente. ¡Sal! ¡Yo te lo mando! La venganza ha llegado. Desencadenaré una ola de terror como nadie jamás ha podido imaginar. Y mi hermano y su hija, que me tildaron de loco, morirán. Y te juro por los infiernos, Waldo, que desearán no haber nacido nunca. Te dirán la muerte bramando de dolor. ¡Ve y destruya, santo! Ellos te acompañarán. Que Dios me perdone, pero no siento que mi tío se haya muerto. Siempre me inspiró horror. Así acabó para nosotros, una pesadilla de meses. Sin embargo, ahora que todo ha pasado, siento una gran Olvida intranquilidad. Todo eso. No sé por qué. Disfrutemos del paseo. Tranquilízate. Será mejor que nos vayamos.
Nos vienen siguiendo, acelera. Mía. Pero es increíble. Nadie puede resucitar. Quizá robaron su cadáver. Debemos admitir la realidad. Mi hermano, si aún vive, es capaz de haber hecho esas criaturas horripilantes que trataron de secuestrar a Gloria. Presiento que mi hermano trama algo siniestro para destruirnos. ¿Qué haremos? ¿Por qué ocultaste a mi padre que Blue Demon está de parte de ellos? No es posible. Desgraciadamente así es. Nos atacó con gran saña, ayudado por los monstruos. Demon había sido hasta ayer mi mejor amigo. Tal vez la tradicional rivalidad entre ustedes lo provocó. No somos rivales más que dentro del ring. No encuentro ninguna explicación lógica. ¿Y si él abrigara un resentimiento del cual tú nunca te enteraste? Los monstruos que evidentemente maneja Bruno Adler son invulnerables. Estos son todos los papeles que he podido encontrar sobre los experimentos de mi hermano. Tal vez si me hablara de los antecedentes familiares de ustedes, podríamos investigar algo. Bien. Usted ha de saber por qué me lo pregunta, Santo. Nuestros antepasados fueron originarios de la antigua Transilvania. En esa región de Europa, las leyendas sobre vampiros humanos y otros monstruos eran creídas hasta por hombres de relativa cultura. Bruno, pese a su extraordinaria inteligencia, se interesó por investigar tales supersticiones. Más tarde, entregado por completo a la ciencia, se adelantó a nuestros tiempos logrando revivir a quienes habían muerto de lesiones cerebrales. Envanecido, traspuso los umbrales de la vida y de la muerte, resucitando muertos que habían sido mutilados en accidentes. Su hermano ha resucitado y está formando un ejército de muertos vivientes para destruirnos. Que el cielo nos proteja, santo, si sus palabras son ciertas.
Oh my god. I don't know. It, like, uh, what was what was he thought? Was he thawing the Cyclops out? I don't understand. I'm not sure if he was thawing him out or if he was like trapped in a cave and he was like thawing out the entrance to the cave. I don't know. I think he was supposed to be thawing him out. Yes. Very weird. He's Which frozen. Would have made more sense for uh, Frankenstein's monster because you know he you last see him in the Arctic in the book. Yeah, no, Frankenstein's monster. They don't even rescue him. He just shows up, and yeah, he's uh, like, "Hey guys!" Oh, like the the Wolfman looked like like a I, I like just like an old black guy with like yeah. a, with fangs. <laughs> was like he does look like an old yeah. Like, why? Um, why he does look like an old black man with with just fangs and that's it and yeah. with a beard. Well, I mean, he had like sideburns or something. Yeah, like mutton chop. Like, yeah, like mutton yeah, like, All right, dude. For some reason, very strange. Yeah. <laughs> but what I love you, uh, remember when we did uh, Assignment Terror? Uh, yeah. The aliens who uh, their their big plot to conquer humanity was to uh, resurrect, you know, uh, Frankenstein's monster and the mummy, and this yeah. is the exact same ones here. You know, let them yeah. loose in the world, and somehow that was going to destabilize <laughs> human civilization or something or. Clones? I think maybe they're going to be clones. I don't know, but whatever. Yeah, it ruins talking. exactly that movie. Yeah. Well, worse. It. I don't know. This one's just kind of. It went from like kind of making sense to being like all over the place, and I'm I'm here for it. Oh, but it's God. just. It's. <laughs> I love when they're resurrecting the monsters, and then the doctor is like, "They're alive!" And then Waldo looks shocked for some reason, and then he runs away, <laughs> and like. And, and I mean, maybe know, he was just worried about being was attacked. Already alive. Why would they be electrocuting him? Yeah, I don't know. And also, when like Santo got beat pretty easily, um, I love how they just their whole plan was just to throw him off of a cliff oh, yeah, just and hope that that really him. close to the edge, and hopefully he'll just fall off to his doom. Yeah, and then he got, very quickly gets in a car and chases him, and then they oh that car had some serious uh like like just like horsepower. It's, like the Santo mobiles. Yeah. Whoa, it was well, like the Batmobile. Also, also when the, the bad guys went from driving in daylight to suddenly it was nighttime, and that for some reason made them lose control of the car and fall off the cl- like drive off the cliff and explode. Yeah. And then they wriggled free from the debris. Yeah, I thought they were going to have more with like Blue Demon. I don't know, like something melting and reforming or yeah. brushing the fire off. He just kind of like... No, nah, it's not off. that kind of movie. He just wriggles. He just nonchalantly oh, walks off while on fire. Well, and also I love that, like, their whole thing, their whole plan, like, Waldo's like, oh, I want to experiment on some live bodies, but then as soon as he, him gets, in the neck. he tries to kill him instantly, and they're like, no, like, prolong this. No, we, He's we like, can, oh, okay. We can do so. I, we've got technology here. We just we can quote him. We can we can work with this. But master, you told me I can do whatever I want. I want to stab him in the neck. Yeah, that's what he meant by perform experiments. He meant just stab people in the neck until they die, and then that's it. That's the experiment. experiment. Yeah, I mean, uh, stab him. Does he die? Does he not die? Uh, yeah, stabbing him. It's got a limited no. sample size, you know. But yeah, it's technically this one's science. Yeah. He just. I want that to be a character like. And then something else that's like it's gonna get more screen time. It's like he's presented as being some sort of scientist, but in reality he's just like stabbing people and that's it. He just loves he to stab people. For being a scientist. Yeah. Yes, yeah, more experiments. He just stabs them a lot, like yeah. and that's it. And he's like, Yes, my my work is progressing nicely. <laughs> I've achieved so much in so little time. <laughs> And it's yeah, just a uh, bunch of people that just yeah, just a that pile bunch of, of corpses out of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it this uh, it, it gets pretty wild. Uh, it's gotten pretty wild so far. I can't wait to see where it goes next. I can't wait to see what these monsters actually do because so far, just looking at them, I'm intrigued. Oh, the, and by oh, intrigued, oh, the I mean they look terrible. The mummy just looked like an old man, an old. Like just an old man going like this, with yeah. a bunch of gauze wrapped around. Yeah. Now like are they like some dude who just had the crap punched out of him? 
Yeah, he's all just messed up. I mean, the Cyclops is kind of cool, but I yeah, don't know what that's right. supposed to be representative of. I mean, there's no it Cyclops that I know that looks like that. It's definitely like a sci-fi movie Cyclops yeah. from space. Well, I love it. All, all it's done so far is just scream. It, it like appears and it just goes, rah! Well, I mean, some you dude know. was taking a blowtorch to his face. I would yeah, I mean, too. A, why would, yeah, yeah like, yeah. would go up in flames. I'd be screaming like Cyclops. And then he was being electrocuted. So, again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I I, guess I do understand all the screaming then. But it's weird to me that he's the only one that is doing it. Also, they apparently have a robot, or not a robot, they have a ring that... Uh, oh, control, can control vampires? Vampire. Yeah, that's badass. I want one of those. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the uh, little tiny, um, when he's in bat form, he's just kind of stuck at the top of the cave. Yeah. And then he like looks kind of like a goth version of Boy George, and then with a little hat on, reach down on like the ceiling, starts t- bites everybody, bites you in the neck, ah, bites you in the neck. You have the ring of power. Are they gonna turn into vampires now? They're... No, you can't have zombie vampires. Oh, that's too bad. In theory, that would have been like the worst thing to bite into because they would have like, I mean, if they have blood, it's gonna be decayed blood. You know, that would be gross. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like. It would be like congealed, yeah. probably very clotted. Yeah. So you think he'd learn from the first bite? He'd be like, blah, blah. but he bites him, and he's like, no, no he did it again. But he was leaping all over the place. <laughs> he's like, surely <laughs> this other guy who dresses and looks somewhat similar to this guy doesn't have nasty veins, but no. Luckily, <laughs> son, uh, Blue Demon was there to save him from himself using you think his magic vampires... power. Can be susceptible to bloodborne illnesses or spread bloodborne illnesses. Ah, uh, they'd probably be able to spread it like a typhoid Mary kind of thing. Yeah, that's what but I was. I don't, they, I'm pretty sure, based on the lore, they wouldn't be able to die from it because it's their whole shtick. Yeah, since they're like undead, but yeah, I feel like they would be very nasty though and diseased. You know, they'd be like crust punks. Only so if, they bit, so if they if they bit you, you would get a uh, vampirism and syphilis. Yes, it'd be very horrible. Yeah, because yeah, if you think about, it, especially like these vampires have lived for who knows how long, who knows what all kinds of illnesses they've contracted. They're probably like very, you know, disgusting. They're and they're just vectors for the disease. They don't actually, you know, like it doesn't. They don't succumb to them. They just have them. No, that was part of the uh, what was it, Nosferatu? Um, oh yeah, with the plague. Yeah, when he came, yeah, when he came out on the boat, and then all the rats ran off, and the yeah. people started dying. Yeah, I guess I'm just revisiting old tropes. That's all this episode has been on from me is old just me speak. revisiting revisiting old tropes. Yes. Um. Also, I just want to say this really quick before we get back to the movie. Speaking of Nosferatu, I know that there is going to be a new Nosferatu movie this year. Yeah, and at first when I heard that Willem Dafoe was in it, I was like, "Oh, so he's gonna be a vampire again, like he was in um, Shadow of the Vampire, because he looks like Nosferatu right. every day of his life since Who's forever." He's supposed to be playing. He is like a vampire hunter. Oh. but I'm okay with that because I saw I saw like a still of him, and he looked very like crazed and like. Wily, it, it was kind of it kind of looked like his character from <laughs> the lighthouse, but now a vampire hunter, you know, is what it but kind of like, okay. Uh, yeah, but it looks pretty cool. But it's gonna be Bill Skarsgård who played Pennywise in the the remake of it. Um, okay. he's, gonna, he's gonna be playing Nosferatu, Count Orlock. So I'm actually pretty excited about it because I think he's a good actor and he's yeah. good at being monsters. So Maybe he'll add some creepy shit to this role that that uh, only Willem Dafoe before him has ever really done. Because have you have, have you ever seen that um, that movie? Yeah, Shadow of the Vampire. Vampire. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that we need another one because it's it was done and it was good. Yeah. Was... Well, if it were being done by somebody who like is generally pretty great at making movies i think uh robert eggers uh or is it david eggers robert or david 
think it was David. David. Anyway. anyway, the guy who did like The Witch and um, The Northman and uh, The Lighthouse and all those things, those fun romps. Um, that he's the one that's doing this. So hopefully it'll be good. I guess we'll just have to see. But anyway, we should probably get back to this movie before I just go through every old trope that exists. I'm sure we'll hit a few more on the way down. Quietos. Vean a esos hombres. Jamás les harán daño. Yo soy su amo. Les he dado la vida. Obedecerán mis órdenes mentales o de lo contrario, los destruiré. Vayan. Las huellas son de un enorme animal plantígrado que sale de la laguna y vuelve a ella. ¿Y qué piensas hacer? Dar con el animal. Oh, 
Hemos terminado, güey. Métanlo en la cámara descompresora. Ese maldito enmascarado de plata casi destruyó a uno de mis más fieles aliados. Pero hoy en la noche, Waldo... Mi furia no tendrá límites. Santo y mis odiados familiares morirán. Estos matarán para mí. Estos consumarán mi venganza.
Santo, la pistola en el suelo. Es un luchador extranjero al que llaman el vampiro. Aseguró que te va a arrancar la máscara y va a acabar con tu fama de invencible. Es más, ha hecho declaraciones públicas y si rehusas, va a decir que le tuviste miedo. Acepto el reto.
Buenas noches, señorita. Hola. Quiero pedirle un favor. Tengo urgencia de ir a mi casa. ¿Podría llevarme? Encantado. sido víctima del poder de un vampiro humano. Dímelo, por tu bien. No tengamos salvación, santo. Ni los rayos de la pistola electrónica lograron dañarle. Aún así, evitaré que la vida de usted y de Gloria peligren. Mi tío, en su locura asesina, también tratará de matarte. 
Esos monstruos solo pueden atacar de noche. Mientras yo descubro dónde se encuentra ese misterioso castillo, ustedes dormirán de día y por la noche estarán en sitios concurridos. What the hell? I like how the monsters aren't like affected by daylight. It doesn't seem to bother the like burst of flames. It's like they have a curfew, you know. Yeah. Like like when dog comes, you better be home, otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. So every night right. they go out and try to like defeat Santa. 
some pinky in the brain shit, man. Like, yeah, really, all the like, schemes so, that don't go yeah, anywhere. So on, on, like, day one, they all just indiscriminately, like, attacks town folk. And so they didn't yeah. show up. So I'm like, okay, all right, plan B, we're going to hide in the water and wait until he swims past. Then we're going to jump him. That didn't Yeah. Happen. Why was the Cyclops a water monster? It made no sense. It's like they wanted not. to. I told you that was going to bother you. Black and blue, and then, uh, they... The next night, it was, all right, what if I disguise myself as a luchador and then we attack? No, no, before that. No, no. What if we show up at his house and try to attack him when he's Beat just the there? Of everybody and try yeah, to shoot him. Work. And then the next night, what if I disguise myself as a luchador? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? It's so ridiculous. What if I wait in the shrubbery, bite some woman, turn her into a vampire, and have him lure him out? Uh huh. Which Santo is a two timer because he was oh, yeah. getting ready to make out that vampire girl. Well, he totally would have, except she, uh, you know, I, immediately started to I, I, like, yeah. I bet he would have been like, she used her undead powers against the vampire me. Wilds, I, had no, I had no choice. Yeah. I'm powerless. Yeah. I, this is this is just so out of out of control and like the whole thing with them yeah like you said they supposedly can't attack during the night that's what he said uh, no during but, the day they can't attack during the day like they can only yeah. attack during the night they can't yeah. attack during the day and yet they the vampire seems to not like he was biting people it looked like at daytime and but it he was, can't I'm attack it was supposed to be night but you know they didn't have the budget for it but still yeah. I don't know. It's 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 pretty wild and wacky, though. Yeah. Again, it was like they had a curfew, and they were like, "All right, Dad, we'll be home by daybreak." Man. Yeah. And, and they and for some reason, the director made us sit through this whole goddamn flamenco dance or whatever with no <laughs> rhyme. Or reason. Yeah. And I I expected no. them to come bust it, but no, they never did. They nope, just they did not. No, that, that was just movie. there. It was just there. He just wanted to do it, I guess. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It was a, a lovely dance, but oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah but no, it served it served as much purpose as the uh, the wrestling at the very beginning of this movie. Yeah, which is to say, it it padded it out slightly. <laughs> I I don't understand what they expect to really do because they just keep getting foiled every turn. You know. Oh yeah, he just drops an elbow or jumps off a car or just like shh, like throws him into something. The one time he actually caused any damage is when he stabbed the uh, Cyclops with a stake. And yeah. somehow that killed him. And then the doctor just brought him back anyway. It's like, eh. Yeah, and then he just kind of... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's... it's really It just really seems like they wanted to do a movie where a luchador just beats the shit out of a bunch of guys and that's it. And, like, that's the no, whole I, thing. I think that is it, yeah. So, like, it, he, he keeps the world safe. By like taking like one or two hours out of his day and beating the crap out of monsters. Yeah, that's what and he does. They, and the rest of the time, he just hangs out in a bar. You know, it's not a bad life. It's, it's kind of like an episode of like Power Rangers or something almost. Cause the way that it's just sort of, you know, it's like episodes of a show instead of like one movie where it's just like, well, this is just the time that they tried to do this and I stopped them. And you know, you think they would get tired of doing this after a while you know like because i mean they're they're pretty clearly despite having numbers on their side and technology and magic supernatural stuff they apparently are no match for this one guy who just i mean is a badass and just, yeah beats the crap out of him every time and is apparently immune to vampirism and lycanthropy because he's been bitten i think by uh, no, no. Uh, the vampire tried to bite him twice, but both times his girlfriend chased it off with a cross. Oh, okay. I thought he got some bites in, but maybe also when they're trying to bite his neck, maybe his mask oh, like mask kind of away. protects him slightly too. I don't know. No, uh, his girlfriend chased him away both times, and it turned into a bad just escaped. Oh yeah, there was the cross, and yeah, yeah. The, it, the, and the then immediately all away. the monsters showed up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Plan B, guys. He's turned into a bat. He's running away. We gotta get in there real quick. Yeah, then they just yeah, I, I it's so silly. The pacing is so weird in this too. The whole thing, it's just, it's like someone's, like brain, vomit is you know what I mean. It's just like they had all these ideas, 
we're going to have a scene where this happens and the scene where this happens. And it doesn't matter how, like, the story goes or, or like, it doesn't matter, like, the significance of this. It's just, this is just how it is. This is just things. It has to have this part where they're trying to step on his neck and, you know, and he wriggles free and... I almost feel you bad know. for the mummy, though. I mean, the mummy literally looks like some, somebody's, like, aged grandfather wearing, yeah. like, sweatpants. And, you know, he's just very confused and doesn't know what's going on. I don't think I've seen him successfully get any hits in. He just keeps trying. No, and it seems no, like he's he just, just... like, droopy pants in all of the scenes. It's <laughs> like, like, oh, old poor man. man. Trying to oh, fight Somebody take like... him home. Give him some... Put on Matlock <laughs> and give him some soup. Poor man. He has... Like, the like, werewolf. The... I, the werewolf just wants a hug, you know. Yeah, that's all they. That's all they really want. Yeah. Maybe they're just misunderstood. Yeah. And the poor Cyclops. Every time they do the close up of the face, he looks like a weird sock puppet. Yeah, I, I feel like it's just them taking the mask yeah. and they're just moving the mouth around yeah. with their hand and making the eye like I like the eye. I mean, the eye but, I mean, is kind of cool. That is, but literally, just the close up on his face when he's always going. Bah! But I think if you're going to have a Cyclops, it needs to have some kind of... You don't always have to have this. Like, I mean, I love Ray Harryhausen. I love his Cyclops. I think it was really cool. Yeah. And it doesn't do anything cool with its eye. Uh, but its eye does get gouged out at some point, gets stabbed in the eye. So unless that happens in this movie, I feel like that's a rule. If you have a Cyclops in a movie, it has to either do something with its eye like shoot a beam out yeah. or hypnotize you or something like that. Or it has to have its eye gouged out. Like that's a rule. I, I feel good like. wrestlers can do eye gouges, but we'll see. Oh well, yeah. You're not split. Yeah. That would be a dirty move. I, I think but, it's a dirty move. Yeah. But then again, he did stab it in the heart with a wooden stake earlier. So, I mean, that's true. He isn't, lot, he isn't quite following the rules. Yeah. Right. And these guys won't leave, leave him alone anyway. I mean, he's, you know, he has like been assaulted by them multiple times, so I feel like you yeah, know every night, literally every night. Yeah, so I feel like he kind of should be able to do whatever it takes at this point, you know, from a legal standpoint. Because the, the law is obviously not intervening. No, the, the law doesn't apply to Luch Doors anymore. Anyway. No, but uh, we will see. It looks like they are getting ready to come out again at night, and. Uh, Maybe this time they'll be effective. Probably not, but we'll see. I, I don't think so. Never Everybody, look for the eye gouge, or or, or a laser beam. There's got to be some kind of. If not, it's going to be a huge affront to the whole Chekhov's gun. Uh, you know, I think that's what it kind of what if it you have a Cyclops eye. It has to be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beams if, if, or get yeah, gouged if, out. Yeah. In the next scene, it must either be gouged out or it must emit a beam or hypnosis or some other sort of ocular power. I like it. Let's find yeah. out. ¿Cuándo terminará esto? Brasil es 
cantar, reír y llorar, tu vida es un carnaval. ¿Todo listo, Demon? Listo. Dijiste que estaba loco. Mira, 
A esos les reimplanté la cabeza y los miembros de otros muertos. Y a estos monstruos, a quienes los imbéciles como tú siguen considerando un mito, los volví a la vida. Están bajo mi voluntad. También Blue Demon es ahora un ser que piensa como yo quiero. <risa> ¡He dominado la vida y la mente! <risa> ahora, desintegraré primero a mi sobrina. <risa> y tú sufrirás presenciándolo. <risa> Eres un miserable, un loco. ¿Me oyes un paranoico? Maestro, Frankenstein te había enterrado en el cuello esto. Un vibrador electrónico. Sí. Santo vive aún. Le daré la bienvenida final de su vida. Ustedes, vayan a vigilar la entrada del castillo. Y Demon por aquel lado. Querido hermano, veamos qué ciencia es más poderosa, la tuya o la mía. Bruno, mi muerte nada ayudará a tus pérfidos planes. ¡Reflexiona! Pagarás tu crimen por usar la ciencia con fines perversos. ¡Te equivocas, cobarde! ¡Procede, Waldo! Santo, tu amigo. ¿Qué sucedió? Después te explicaré. Gente inocente corre peligro de muerte. ¡Vamos!
últimos minutos que te quedan de vida, contempla lo que yo, tu hermano, he creado. Listo, maestro. Puedo proceder. ¡Destruye los demonios! ¡Obedece! ¡Te lo mando yo! Te advertí que el mal jamás derrotará al bien. aparatos. ¡Ya te cubro!
that's how it ends. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <sighs> Although I really liked where uh, one of the zombies gets decapitated and the battle stops and they're all just going to wait. Yeah, even they Sancho suddenly is... discover the, 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 uh, they discover that they're mortal, that they yeah. can be killed. And they're all just like this sudden shocking revelation like, right, we can die? Like, oh, Why did nobody tell us that we can die? Oh no, my it makes me feel shattered. like shattered. Like the, as the situation escalated past the point that they're comfortable with. Like they, you know, like they were all for beating the crap out of a guy and like for multiple days on end. But then like once he, you know, he pulls out a, a flail and knocks the guy's head off. And they're like, oh my God. Yeah. They're just, I feel like they all instantly like resigned. Like they all were nope, like, oh, sorry, dude, we're out. Fuck that. Yeah. No. Guys. No, that, that that was my line. I I I had already freshly reapplied some green, and I was ready to go. But now, no, 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 no. Also, Otto and and Waldo just are gone, or did they die in the fire? Or yeah, I don't know. And the rest of the monsters, besides the vampires and the mummy, who apparently just died from falling off a building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they spent the entire like special plates budget on the uh, blood spurting from the chest after being staked, and yeah. the uh, slow fade from teeth to not teeth, and then from yeah. uh, dead vampire, vampire to just coffin. Yeah, yeah that was the entire crazy. special. They like shot that first, and they were like really, really impressed with it. They were like, "Oh crap, we have no money." Yeah, so that's that's why everybody else uh, kind of sucked. That that's that's what I think. It's. Uh... <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know. It was it was very it was an interesting journey to okay, be so sure. The entire plot of the movie though is so the mad scientist was insulted by his brother before he died. Mm -hmm. That's it. That that's the plot. Yeah. Of well all he really wanted was his brother's love. I don't so think he, so. So we <laughs> I don't so, think he, so he had his assistant bring him back. All right, hang on. So that he could continue to get that in death, and uh, the the only way he could express that desire was by reanimating a, a bunch of monsters and sending them to kidnap him, and then threatening to disintegrate uh, his daughter in front of him. But really, all he wanted was love. It's kind of an like an overreaction to a slight like in uh, you know, the cask of Amontillado. It's a similar, you know, it's like uh, what what is what do they call it um. Uh, excessive retribution or something like that, you know, for a very minor. Yeah, his you brother know. said he was kind of crazy. That's yeah. it. That's what set him off, oh, and then yeah, he died. Crazy, and then somehow he just died. Like he was so affronted, he just he he, he was beclipped, oh, and he just he died. Crazy motherfucker. Yeah, like he's yeah. Like, yeah, he's like I'll reanimate, and then I'll show you. Yeah. How crazy I can be. Yeah. Uh -huh. And really, I mean, Santo's like motivation is I mean, just self defense. Essentially, that's it. Like he's just I mean, he's just trying to protect his girlfriend, yeah. And, yeah. You know, he's not even very good at that because again, he runs off with a vampire at some point. But yeah. technically that's it. That's that's his whole motivation for keeping the world safe from a monster invasion as a Dude, leave my girlfriend alone. We're just we're, we're here to show. I mean, what the fuck? You know? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. The pretty simple motivation, you know. And I know we don't really do like a rating system, but how many, how many uh, unexpected flamenco dance numbers would you give this out of out of ten or or whatever number? Ten. Uh, this is a solid three. I don't know. It's not the yeah. worst thing we've seen, uh, obviously, but uh, it, it was a lot of not plot related stuff on screen. Like, it I'm gonna did it not carry the plot. I'm going to give it a three as well. And, it, and they could have had a four if they would have included the creature from the Black Lagoon instead of, of Cyclops, which made no sense at all. Yeah. I mean, actually, no, this could have had. This okay. Two things could have saved this. One would have been, and at least in my eyes, one would have been instead of a cyclops, it was a creature from the Black Lagoon, 
And the other thing, that didn't happen. So that's already one point down. Yeah, I did not. But then they could have saved themselves by making the Cyclops either have an eye power or get its eye gouged out. They didn't do that either. So, no. you know, look what... I would have liked this talk. more if all of the monsters had become luchador wrestlers. And that was kind of a... That was actually kind of tied in better yeah. rather than them just randomly, like, ambushing them in a parking lot. Like, I eh, no. I mean, right. If they'd all like gone in, like if they'd gone all in on the luchador aspect with the monsters, that would have made a lot more sense. Oh, what? Which speaking of that, I loved how they showed the dra the the vampire getting ready for his match with Santo, but then it's very clearly a different oh, actor who is playing yeah, with. They spent all the time on. shellacking me in the like pale stuff, and yeah, yeah and then they're like, yeah, that so dude's not being... pale. No, he goes from being very pale either. to being rather dark complected and and also much more like muscular than he was yeah. previously. Yeah. It's very silly. Um but yeah, and so I, yeah. I, and I thought the scenes with the vampire just kind of leaping were a bit gratuitous. That same just yeah. flying oh, leap. But you know what? But one thing though that actually I might give him one more point okay. and bring it up to a four because they did, in fact, not explain the alien whatsoever. He and never it came never back. came back. Nope. It he never was there came at the very beginning. Uh, he was there for the reanimation sequence, I think, and then never addressed again. Then he was like, I've seen, he was like, I've seen enough. You know? And you know what? I just realized what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the alien, the alleged alien corpses they found last year. <laughs> Did you just, I think it was in, it was in Mexico. Okay. And, oh my God, you have to look it up. And I'm going to, when I post something about this yeah, movie, yeah. I'm going to like include a picture of this alien. It looks like that kind of, but with a brain. It, okay, so last year, I'm I'm so surprised that we didn't talk about this at all. Hmm. But there was this whole thing where this guy who worked for the Mexican government claimed that he had found these bodies of supposed aliens. Okay. And they did some sort of like tests on their genetic makeup and they had partial human DNA. But come to find out, because this guy's a grifter, he just goes around mutilating like these Mayan mummies and like attaching oh. animal bones to them and like other things to sort oh, of like, like the old school uh Fiji Fiji mermaids. mermaids. Yeah. yeah he like Fiji mermaids these alien mummies. Fiji aliens. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, this is proof of extraterrestrial life. But that's what they kind of reminded me of was like or that's what the alien kind of reminded me of, but okay. like a bigger a bigger version of that. So I'll show you that later. But yeah, yeah, like that's what it. I wonder if that maybe is, maybe like culturally, that's what. Aliens oh, look that like. there's some kind of actual Mexican folklore, whatever oh, like aspect of that, or yeah, something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe moon people or something. I'm pretty sure it was just something ripped off from a sci-fi movie, but maybe yeah, that, yeah it could be too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I overall like this movie, even though I gave it a low rating because no, it's it's a fun it again. Fun it's stuff. not a good movie by any definition, right. but it's fun. Yeah, I mean, how often are you going to see you know <laughs> luchador wrestlers go up against Frankenstein and the Wolfman and the Vampire? Yeah. even if they are really bad examples of any of those things, it was yeah. still fun. It was fun. Um, also, one last thing I wanted to point out was. You know, I feel like the goons were made way more efficient than the monsters were when it came to like Definitely. laying a smack down on Santo and until you know they came until to the knocks one set up with a flail. Before they experienced yeah. ego death and realized yeah. realized you we know, too are mortal. Yeah. Existential crisis. <laughs> Must go home. That was maybe that was one of the best parts of the movie, honestly. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I, I I give it I give it four unexplained flamenco dance numbers out of 10 like official um all right what are we ending this on um you know i think since this is our first show of the new year we should talk a little bit about 
um, how people make resolutions and how it's not so important. Resolutions aren't that important because it's just another sort of uh, responsibility that's self-imposed. I think that's great to improve as a person, of course. Self-improvement, that's part of, like, you know, becoming wiser, experiencing life, and learning from past mistakes. Um, But I don't think that you necessarily have to set extremely high standards or very strict uh, sort of rules for yourself. Um, maybe a resolution should just be to overall be a better person. Maybe not necessarily that's, take up that's kind of what I went for this year. Whatever. Yeah, my uh, resolution was to be a little more positive this year. And so yeah. far, it's given me psychic powers in the office. It's great. There you go. See, you've yeah, tapped like, into your, yeah, like part of your brain. Mind reading. It's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, they always say, I don't think this is true at all because I feel like if we only used 3% of our brain, we would be like mongrel people, you know, but they say, don't they say how many, how much percent of our brain do they say we use? Yeah, they're supposed to be like 5% or something, but yeah, that's complete nonsense because any EKGs or anything study on your brain shows that it's yeah. you know, constantly blipping all over the place. But so far, I can tell you, being more positive has given me mental powers. See. The- then that's the that's my whole point. My whole point is uh, it was just Monday I was referred to as a god among men. So you there know. you go. Be more Man. positive and everything will get better for you in some way. And no, that's not true. That's actually bullshit. I, I no, can't <laughs> it's not normally, but so but far be, I'm getting superpowers, so I'm just saying, you know, well, maybe there's something to do it. Be be more positive because, you know. Life is very challenging, but if you talk about how shitty everything is all the time, I know this from experience, trust me, uh, as it has sabotaged many a relationship, re- you know, romantic, uh, professional, um, friendship, you name it. Uh, being just an unfun, negative person is not a good thing to do. And even if, even if, your life sucks you can still talk about it in a way that doesn't repel other people you know what i mean like no one likes this sort of mangy old mayor that comes around negative nelly the old fucking horse that should have been sent to the glue factory ages ago and you know nobody likes that at all it's very repellent um so yes like i think having an overall better like just trying to improve as a human creature uh is a is overall is is a lot more constructive than saying i'm gonna do pilates every day or i'm gonna start eating only plant-based foods or i'm gonna expose my asshole to uv lights for eight hours every you know two days because that's That's a thing that's that's a thing that people do they think that like there's some sort of special like energy that you can absorb from the sun by doing this sort of nude yoga where you expose your anus to the sun for like periods of time. But to All me, right, that and, just... uh, I think we can leave off on that. Yeah. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't... <laughs> don't do that folks. All right. So uh, with that, uh... good thing this isn't a library show. <laughs> no. I am Condor. And I am Crow, and uh, this is a thing we did. We'll see you next time, people. Yes, goodbye and good night.